Hello, my name is Michael Lambert, and uh, today I'm, well, I'm in Italy. I'm in uh, a town called Novara, which is a town of about 100,000 population. Uh, it's about 20 miles uh, immediately west of, of Milan in the north of Italy. Uh, it's, um, it's a town with a mixed economy, and uh, I, I've come here for two reasons. One, because it's quite easy to get here, and two, um, uh, the fact that it's very typical. I think this is uh, a, a sort of town you'll see um, all over the north of Italy. Italy, as you may well know, is, has got a north-south divide as we have in England, uh, and it's the other way around. The north is, is, is the richer part and the south is the poorer part. I've been here for a couple of days, looked around a lot and talked to quite a few people. Um, uh, it, it looks pretty prosperous to me. I, I, I know there'll be people in the comments who'll be saying that it, it, Italy's on its, um, uh, on its last legs and they're, they're all about to go bankrupt and collapse, but it, it looks pretty good. But anyway, I'll, I'll show you around a little bit and um, see what you think. You know, when you come to somewhere like this, to Navarra, which is, uh, as I said before, it's by no means an exceptional city. I mean, there are lots and lots and lots of cities just, just as nice all over the north of Italy, but all over Italy. Um, you, you notice all sorts of things. You notice, for example, how clean and tidy and, 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 and orderly everything is and how the streets are spotless. And you notice how there isn't any, uh, very little graffiti. You notice there aren't many there aren't any uh, homeless people or beggars. Uh, you notice how there aren't uh, boarded up shops everywhere. Uh, I think in the time I've been here, I've probably seen three or four shops that are actually empty and, and, and to let. Uh, and and uh, although you'll see in the video that quite a lot of shops are, are, are closed, it's because I've generally filmed before 10 o'clock in the morning, which is when most shops open. 
and, and you don't see you don't see charity shops, you don't see pan shops, you don't see kebab shops, you don't see fast food restaurants virtually at all. And instead, you've got you know, nice cafes, nice restaurants. You've got all these little tiny shops, which uh, sell all sorts of, uh, of merchandise, and hardly any hardly any big shops. You, you you will have seen in the video, perhaps you've seen the H and M here, and there, there's a uh, Calcedonia and Intimissimi, but these are are exceptions and. Uh, there are, of course, uh, chains of retailers, huge chains of retailers in Italy, but they're all based in the uh, out-of-town showrooms. Instead, the town centres are kept as nice places to come to enjoy. And, uh, uh, and this is, I think, a very good example of that. So I've had one or two uh, cappuccinos whilst I've been here, and the cost of a cappuccino in in, uh, in Navarra is uh, uh, one euro sixty cents, which is about one pound thirty two pence. Now, if you want to have a a, a coffee in uh, in the UK, I, your chances are you're going to end up in Starbucks or Costas or Cafe Nero because they totally dominate the coffee market, and there you'll find the price is almost almost twice or about twice what it costs in Italy. Uh, no doubt because they've got uh, huge corporate profits to make and uh, because they're paying very high rent and rates and, uh, and, and other expenses. But uh, most of the coffee shops, in fact, we've got almost all of them in Italy, are privately owned and you're, you're very often being served by the, uh, the owner. And, uh, 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 and they're all different and they generally have nice pastries and uh, cakes and things. And very often in the summer you can sit outside and... Uh, it's a whole different experience at, at, at half the price. I, I, I did also, uh, obviously I've eaten out, and I, I went to a, quite a nice restaurant uh, yesterday. Nice clean restaurant, uh, quite busy, and nice white tablecloths and all the rest of it. And uh, I, I, I had a, a pizza. I had a Four Seasons pizza, a big pizza, extremely delicious, as you would expect. I had a half a litre of wine, that's um, two-thirds of a bottle, and I had a coffee afterwards. And that cost me um, 19 euros which is about 16 pounds and 30 pence and i looked uh, just as a matter of interest uh, what it would cost me to buy a pizza in uh, a similar pizza in, in in the uk and there again you're left really with the with the big chains it's pizza express and, and franco mango and all the rest of it it would have cost again uh, around about 30 pounds uh, almost double what i what i paid in italy uh, and we wonder why the hospitality industry is, is suffering uh, when food is food and drink is twice the price of what it is in, in Italy.
Now, if you've been kind enough to watch uh, many of my videos in the past, you'll know that I've been warning for quite a long time about uh, the likely problems we're going to have with food imports this year, now that we're bringing in import uh, uh, regulations, in, in import controls, and in particular for fruit and veg, much of which comes from from the EU. And I thought, uh, uh, with this in mind, and, and, and bearing in mind also that in my own local super supermarket, and uh, no doubt in, in some of yours, uh, fruit and veg is not quite what it used to be. It's never as fresh as it used to be, and it's all looking a little bit, uh, a bit patchy. And I thought I'd just show you very quickly a quick whip round of one of the uh, supermarkets in, in, in Navarra. It's one of a number of supermarkets here. It's certainly not the, uh, the biggest by any means, but uh, uh, see what you think. to Italy for a very, very long time. I started my first business uh, importing goods from Italy when I was in my 20s. And uh, since then, I've, I've visited Italy um, hundreds of times, literally. I've traveled extensively. I speak Italian and, uh, and I've got to know the country quite well. It's a country I absolutely love. I think it's, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. I love the, the, the atmosphere, I love the people. I love the, uh, the, the quality of life. And I think uh, and you might get a, an indication, having seen this little bit of footage of uh, of Navarra, and, and bearing in mind that uh, this is all filmed on a, on a rather cold and often wet March morning. I mean, when the sun's out in the summer, it's really a lot even nicer. Uh, uh, I think quality of life is something we kind of ignore. We're always talking about uh, uh, GDP and so on. And, and, and if, for example, you, you, you know, I, I, I say that uh, things are looking pretty good in Italy, uh, you know, a conservative politician after conservative politician will jump up and say, oh, no, 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 we're, we're growing faster than them and our economy is doing better than them. We're investing more in this, more in that, and we're just better at everything. Well, it's just, it isn't true. You just, just have to look at the evidence with your own eyes. I mean, clearly this is quite a nice town. It's full of nice little shops with lots of nice merchandise and it's got lots of nice cafes and so on. And compared with so many towns in the UK, it is so much, so much nicer. And, uh, I, I, I think it's a, it, 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 it's, a, it's a great pity that more people don't appreciate it. And I don't think, as I said earlier, I don't think it's impossible to improve our towns quite a lot. Obviously, you're never going to make a, a, a Warrington look like a Navarra. But at the same time, there are all sorts of things that could be done to make our towns nicer. To make our towns places where people want to go and uh, and, and hang around and, and see what's uh, what's new and, uh, and have a coffee, perhaps in an independent coffee shop. But anyway, uh, uh, that's really what I, I I I think about it. I mean, I could make this a very long video by talking about other things that we could do to make make make, make matters better. But I think we've got a lot to learn from from places like this and uh, so anyway I, I, I'm going to finish up with uh, a few pictures of just um, things I've seen in shops which give some idea of, of the quality of sort of merchandise that's being sold in all these little independent shops and 
Let's see what you think. So once again, thank you very much for watching if you've watched this far and uh, I hope you found it of interest. Uh, I have to say in, in, in conclusion that uh, I'm a bit fed up with being told by, by the government that uh, everybody else is having it as hard as we are and that uh, we, we, we are doing so well when clearly, clearly we're not. We're, we are definitely going in the wrong direction. Listen, I never ask for, uh, I'm very, always very reluctant to ask for any, any, any financial help and these things, but it does cost quite a lot to do to, to make these videos. So if you feel inclined <laughs> and you wouldn't mind uh, giving me a couple of quid on, uh, on Super Thanks, I, I would very much appreciate it. I would like to do more of these videos. I'd like to go and see a few more places because I think it is, um, it is quite helpful to be able to see how the other, what the other 95% are living. Um, so anyway, once again, thank you very much indeed. And uh, until next time, bye for now.